mark on your side, put your two right sides together and match them up. And then basically you're just going to form a little small pleat. And you know, again, if you're new to sewing, you might not know exactly what I mean, but I think if you see what I'm what I'm up to, it'll make sense. So make a little triangle. And then when you flip that around, I'm just going to hold it. It's going to make this little pleat. And that and basically what that does is that makes your your um, bottom edge fit your bag a little easier. You're also going to have to do this small pleat on your facing. So I just want to mention it to you now so that, you know, as you're laying in your pieces, that you don't start to freak out and go, oh my god, you know, it's not fitting. It is fitting. You just have to make a little pleat. And again, totally easy. I think you guys can figure it out. And as you know, like I said, you're putting it in there, you'll see that, you know, there's a little bit of excess. Just, just you know, reach inside your bag and make your pleat and that'll that'll solve that problem for you going forward is again you know going back to that pleat that I was mentioning so I've actually formed a pleat in excuse me if I can hold that down here you know let me push this to the side because I think this is going to get y'all confused um, you know so now I'm talking about the side facing so the facing first thing is that you need to apply you know your little um, leather piece to the top of your facing just as you did the other one and then you can see here I've made a mark where I need to sew and then you're going to flip that up. Also while you're sewing you might as well form your pleat. So again it's the same dimension you just follow the line. I just made a little line there. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. So you know the last step is you know after you get those two facings done, make sure you can see that two facings done, you're going to set that to your bag. So here's where we are now. So basically what we've already done, as you guys know, we did our front and front and backs and those are sewn together at the, the, the center seam, which you guys have already done. Then this next step, or the step you guys just completed, is sewing the, the sides to the front back of your bag, which, you know, I definitely have done that, so that's good. And then, you know, again, if it's possible, it's a little tight, give it another little press just to make sure that your seams are good. And then um, you can go in and you can clip your seams if you want. Then from there, you know, because this is the part that is going to go, going to be the inside that we're going to see, you don't flip it around. It stays this way. So you basically take this, you take your, your bag, drop that in there. which is basically called dropping the lining. And then what you're going to do is you're just going to use a little bit of rubber cement on all of those top edges. And you are going to um, just secure it. And then um, at that point, you know, once we've got all that done, so just clip that together real quickly so that you guys can see it. Just one second. Now is pretty much. I can get this to sit, sit down. Our bag is pretty much, you know, it's getting there. Securing it all, going back to that glue that you know we've been using, the one that's appropriate for leather. Just put a little bit of glue, you know, like don't go crazy. Maybe like a half an inch of glue on um, all the sides that need to stick together. Take your pattern that you made for your holes. Make sure you've got your holes all lined up, and then go through and you know use your hole punch and then at that point our bag is pretty much you know I'd say we're probably maybe 75 percent there now but hey everybody um, just want to check in with you um, on the projects so as I was working on mine there were a couple things that I thought that I would mention to you because I think um, these were um, hurdles that I encountered um, and you guys probably will too um, so if you remember this trim, this real skinny one, if you guys can see that, this is what I chose to use initially. Um, and since, you know, kind of threading, you know, a couple loops of it, I really think it's too thin. So I'm not going to use this trim anymore. So there's now been a trim change, trim, trim update. I'm going to put that to the side. So now instead, if you guys can see this, I'm going to be using this kind of thicker, heavier leather, just to mention, is, you know, as you're going in, going through those holes in your bag as you're looping it around, um, I found it really difficult to s stick this in the hole. So um, what I 
am suggesting to you guys as a workaround is just buy, I think you guys can see this, um, just buy, you know, a heavyweight um, embroidery needle um, or just a heavyweight needle. You know, they have various thicknesses and textures. This one isn't, you know, super sharp, but it's just, you know, good, you know, pretty good decent length, you know, to be able to get a good grip on it. Um, and I did get this from the craft store. It wasn't very expensive. I think it was 20 cents or something like that. Anyway, so then just take this needle, take a piece of tape, and then just apply your trim to, you know, one end. And then just line up your trim, you know, so that it's kind of, you know, halfway through laying on there. Take your piece of tape, and then, you know, with part of the tape on the trim, and part of the tape on the needle, part of the tape on the trim, part on the needle, and just wrap it around there, maybe like twice, you know, and just get it, you know, don't use a whole lot of tape because the tape will make it thick, but just get it on there so that it's really, really super tight. And then I think what that's going to do is it's going to make you a mini harpoon, <laughs> as I like to call it. And what you can do now is, you know, much easier, you can stick that through your hole and then pull it around and then thread your chain and pull it around. So I think that, that's going to save you, you know, if you guys can see that. I think that little deal, little dealy, um, is going to save you some time and energy because we have so many holes to make it through, y'all. Um, so I just want to give you a workaround that will help you. Going underneath, insert that in, and then you just whip it around. <coughs> now, the trim that I chose, I think you guys can see this, basically has a seam because they took the trim and they, they folded it onto itself. So it actually has a seam on the um, center bottom. I think you guys um, can see that. So basically what I'm doing as I'm doing the whip stitch, I'm making sure to keep that seam on the underneath part. Okay? Okay? <coughs> so that pretty much if you guys can you guys can see that that starts um, your whip stitch and then um, you know like I said all you have to do is just um, whip it around so now I'm at the part or I want to show you the part about if you decide to how to put the chain on so I've done a couple of um, whips links to show you guys now to start I didn't start with the first link of the chain <coughs> I actually left excuse me I actually left two links open so, and then I started um, from that point going forward. And so, you know, again, the process is pretty simple. Um, you just lay your chain so that it's flat. And then I use these binder clips to kind of help me to hold it um, in place. And then basically what I did was, again, starting from underneath, you know, I went from underneath, came up through the top of the bag, through the chain, and then back down again. Um, so again, just kind of whipping around nothing um, too intense and then um, I also because my um, cording has a seam I made sure to keep my seam at the underside okay and then grab a little stabber here a little, a little harpoon get the harpoon in there and pull it through okay all you do is just pull that through okay and so if you guys can see this <coughs> you guys can see that that's how your chain is gonna look um, once you're applying your chain. <clears throat> so it is really long. I think um, the pattern or this bag calls for seven feet of cording. So it, you know it's a lot to pull through. Now can you cut it up into pieces? Yes. Would I do that or did I do that? No, uh -uh, I didn't. And the reason that I didn't do that is because I don't like the starting and the stopping of the cord. Um, I try to stop it as, as, as the few amount of times as possible because it leaves like this very obvious knot or um, you know start and stop place so it's less conspicuous so in order to do that I actually had to work with um, all of the cording by looping it through um, you guys can do like I said whatever you um, your heart desires um, but I did not do that I wanted to keep my um, loops as neat and clean as possible you guys so when you're doing the whip stitch along the top um, the first thing that I did So between here 
and right here, which is basically the corner of the bag. And then what I did was, because, you know, remember how I showed you guys how to do the, um, the harpoon part, you know, how to make the little needle. Um, I just threaded all, you know, I pulled all the string and I, or I should say cording, pulled all the cording through and then stopped. And then the way I was able to secure it so that it, I wouldn't keep pulling it is by using um, a paper clip. So I stuck the paper clip right there on the end, like that. And then I proceeded to, to pull my cording all the way through. And so just a couple things about the cording. You want to make sure that you do it in, um, you do it in an angle. As you're, as you're threading it through. So you don't want to go straight, you want to go at a slight angle. It's just a better look, inches, to make sure that I had enough cording to go down the side. Because right now, at this point, we haven't applied the chain. And the chain is going to come up to the top corner because then, you know, the handle will go. So we want to make sure that we have enough cording to be able to wrap through that chain. So I just thought I would mention that to you guys, you know, as you're doing the cording, you know, definitely take your time and make sure that you get in a really amazing look. So I just want to check in with you guys for the last step of completing this batch. So basically, if you have your um, <clears throat> your link up to each end, you just need to apply your um, chain. Now, in terms of like how long to make your chain, um, basically what I what I suggest is just try it on your shoulder and just try to figure out you know like approximately where you would want your bag to hit. So for me, I felt like a good um, length. Um, for my chain <clears throat> was, let's see, take a look here, um, is about 21 and a half inches. <clears throat> so I cut two pieces of chain, you guys can see here, both 21 inches long. And this 21 inch long chain basically will give you a nine and a half inch sh uh, shoulder drop, which is basically from your shoulder to the top edge of the back. Um, and that's basically, you know, like I said, kind of the, the end of it. You just need to um, clip all this together. So I'm going to do that next. So we're at a point now where we just want to attach um, our link chain. So basically I'm taking, if you guys can see this, I think you guys can see this, just one single open link. And then I'm just threading that through um, the, you know, corner edge. So I'm getting that on there. I can get that on there for you guys. All right. So I've just got that. And then I'm taking my chain link, you guys can see here, and then I'm just putting it on there like that. Again, super simple. You guys can totally do this. Closing it up with my pliers. All right? I suppose that one a little too tight. Okay? Then take your chain handle and then go to the other side of your bag, right there. Okay? And then I've got another open link. I'm just going to hook that in, hook in the other piece, hold it, and close my, if I can hold this right, close my chain up. Okay? And then that basically gives you your chain. <clears throat> and then just do the same thing to the other side. Top edge of the top of where the chain would hit Okay, like, as, like if you try to pull it as far as possible. So measuring from that point, pulling your tape measure straight down, 
and then looking to see where the tape measure intersects with the top edge of your bag. And so for mine, as I said before, it's nine and a half. So my bag has a nine and a half inch drop um, based off the length of chain. Now, this is completely up to you. If you want more length or less length, all you have to do is just increase um, the amount of chain that's in your strap. Because, you know, maybe you want it tight or maybe you want it loose. I'm not really sure how you want it, but that's how you um, adjust the length. That, um, party people, is pretty much it. Congratulations, we have finished this bag. So we've reached the end of this particular video and tutorial series. As you know, we've been working on the Stella McCartney Fabella Fullover Tote. Now, if you've reached this point, hopefully that means that you're done. And I just wanted to sidebar and just say that I know I've been calling it the Foldover Tote, and I really didn't do a foldover option. If you do want to do it, <clears throat> excuse me, I've had this horrible cough. Um, if you do want to do it, all you do is you add some extra chain to your bag and then let it fall over. Now, I didn't do that. Um, I'm going to be wearing it as a shoulder bag, so that's one of the reasons why I put um, the extra chain that I had that I purchased into the, um, into the shoulder strap. You have the pattern done and complete for this that you will, you know, make another one and maybe make an additional colorway or two um, if there's other things that, you know, you want to rock this bag with. Um, what else was I going to say to you? Um, I hope the video series was um, helpful for you. I hope I didn't, I didn't leave anything out because I felt like, you know, every other minute, like I was doing the sidebar, like I was, you know, posting up sidebar, putting up sidebar, which, you know, is, you know, is my thing. More videos because I have a, a huge amount of ideas of things that I want to try. Um, so if you have any constructive, constructive comments or feedback on these particular videos, please be sure to leave a comment down below because, you know, I want these videos to be as good as they possibly can be. And if you've never done these kind of projects before, there might be things maybe that I've overlooked or maybe kind of forgot to mention um, and I want to make sure that, you know, I um, address that going forward. Let me show you the bag. I love this bag. It is so super cute and I'm glad that I chose like this neutral blue embossed snake because I think it's going to go with you know with you know a quite quite a few different things and um oh and the other thing too I just was going to mention to you if you're on Instagram please follow me on Instagram and make sure you tag me if you finish your project because I totally totally told, and I'm serious when I say this I want to see and I want to be included in your guys's projects want to see what you guys what you guys have done with other people who are quack, craft craft who are craft queens like myself or people who just you know want to take on projects and make really cute fashionable stuff um, so I just feel you know very thankful and grateful that you guys have rocked with me through this whole process and we've made this bag y'all um, anyway that is it I wish you bag success and I'll see you in the next video bye bye